Hi everyone, I'm Jen. Me not crazy. I experienced the, let me turn the light on. I experienced the Mandela effect phenomenon and that is where, um, you know, I experienced things that history says never happened. Luckily, there's a whole bunch of you out there who also experienced it with me. So whether you are voices in my head and of course you're going to tell me <laughs> that you also experienced it. But um, I wanted to talk about stuff that's even more crazy than experiencing the Mandela effect. Um, I speak with a lot of people privately. Um, many of you reach out and we have our conversations and you guys are very um, similar. Um, it, I think the pattern that I'm seeing outside of us being kind-hearted people um, is that the side effects is that we seemingly do not belong uh, here. First of all, I walk the figure eight when I'm talking, um, that we seemingly don't belong here. So some of us would rather be the hammer than the nail. So there are many, uh, you know, bad boys out there uh, with criminal backgrounds and whatever, but it's because, um, you know, you did not want to conform to what is over here. And then uh, some of us would rather be a nail than the hammer. So yeah, a lot of us have history of um, bad stuff happening uh, in our lives. Um, because we didn't want to play by the rules or whatever. And um, let's see, a lot of us, um, if not all of us, don't want to deal with what's here. So we numb ourselves, whether it's through alcohol or um, drugs or food like me, um, you know, it numbs us. So. I just wanted you to know you all are more similar than you think and you're telling me stuff that's private but so many of you have these experiences um you know the 3d things that really you know who you are now is what counts what you did before you know hopefully you learned from it if it doesn't make you feel good then don't do it anymore you know um but whatever but i wanted to say part of uh our history is that many of us were diagnosed with mental illnesses such as depression or there's a whole slew of things like for myself um, I had disassociation um, and depression and anxiety PTSD um, whatever you know um, I know there's tons even physically it's like our bodies are not comfortable being here so many of us have undiagnosable uh, or they don't know what the cause is, but then they just label it fibromyalgia or all these other aches and pains. And we're wondering why the medicines are not working. In fact, they're adding uh, additional issues. Well, they're not working because it's not addressing the problem. If you look at Louise Hayes, I don't know where that book is. Um, if you look at Louise Hayes, she it's a beautiful book. I don't have it um, off the bat here. Sorry about that. But um, Louise Hayes is um, amazing because she uh, realized that our body talks to us and uh, you can look up what your symptom is, what your ailment is, and she terms it as dis-ease. Um, any disease that you have or is, is really you not being at ease. So, you know, that helps you. And then she gives you a definition of what that means in your life. Now, it's really easy to find, um, you know, when someone has a halitosis, um, and you know, that you look it up and their issues are self-hatred, what's well, easier for the rest of us to see it than um, that person whom I looked up. They don't know they hate themselves. They're just too busy hating on everyone else, um, but whatever. So it's, it's interesting if you can, you know, be proactive and look at yourself um, and maybe also help you understand other people, what their issues are. It's never, okay, I digress. I'm here to talk about me not crazy. So I want to tell you that, yes, I'm diagnosed with, um, you know, certain, uh, you know, I was depressed and whatever, but um, back in 2015, after the home invasion, 
And after uh, finally all these trips to the hospital regarding my heart and they wanted to, um, what is that vein called by your thigh or your here or your wrist? If you slice it, it could be like it could kill you. Well, they wanted to go in that into my wrist to figure out what was wrong with my heart, you know, when it was on the left and uh, whatever. Now I'm thinking because I still to this day um, feel when the um, when the body changes, I will feel it. I will feel this growing. I will feel the hole that you could you used to only put your finger in, your pinky in. Um, like I can feel the symptoms. So I think that's what was going on. I just didn't know about the Mandela effect then. Um, but whatever. So, you know, I didn't even call the um, 911 anymore. I would, if I would go um, to the emergency room, I would go to the, um, I would just drive. Well, after the home invaders, um, I, and they were living upstairs in my attic space. And it turns out that my roommate was letting them in. Um, I knew about them. I was leaving food out for them because I figured they're homeless. They're probably hungry or whatever. So whatever it was a, uh, at a certain point, um, symbiotic relationship, but then, um, they figured out that I knew and it was, uh, it was not good. So that's another story. But, um, so when I went, to, so when I drove myself to the hospital this one time, they asked me, do you feel safe at home? And ironically, you know, growing up, I was not safe in, in my marriage. I did not feel safe sometimes. And, um, but I never, uh, told on them because, I don't know, I wanted to protect them, especially uh, given I just didn't want to break up families, childhood and uh, in my marriage. So whatever, <laughs> I digress. Um, I did tell them, you know, this is me grown up after my kids are grown or whatever. So I told them, no, I don't feel safe at home. And, uh, and then they also uh, look in my purse and they see two notes to my daughters. Well, with all this heart issue, I just thought, you know, what if I just die? And so I would leave, uh, I figured I always had my purse with me. So I left love letters for them. So they thought I was suicidal. And with the Mandela effect, I did not know it at the time, but you know, 20 plus years ago, um, I had my first unexplainable. So, um, of seeing a dead person, you know, uh, they were dead, but I saw them and interacted with them. And, um, and now I sound cuckoo. <laughs> but before that, I just thought I was my body. I didn't know we were a spirit in our body, you know, an essence in my body. So um, that led me to believing in reincarnating vertically is what I call it. And then now with the Mandela effect, um, for those of us experiencing it, we've met other versions of um, our loved ones. And they knew other versions of us in uh, these other versions of worlds. Um, so I believe we also reincarnate sideways and we can reincarnate all different directions, but whatever. Um, so, you know, if I wasn't suicidal because, I mean, sometimes I definitely wonder what is life about and do I really want to be here? But I personally used to not be able to um, because I just thought, I would be stuck with the same issues in the vertical reincarnation. And, you know, of course, now I know that as well with the sideways reincarnation. So, um, but the good news is, even though they thought I was suicidal, I got to go to summer camp is what I call it. <laughs> and amazing people are there. They're like us. And I really, I really wonder how many uh, people affected by the Mandela effect are, um, are put in there because they think they're crazy and really... We live in a crazy um, world, crazy because a certain small percentage of people are keeping the truth from us. I used to not be into conspiracies. I still don't consider it a, the word conspiracist because I now have eyes to see. So it's not a conspiracy. It's, it just is. Anyhow, I went to summer camp and um, I met a lot of great people. And because I have experienced uh, seeing dead people and uh, angels, uh, winged and non-winged, um, you know, always with a beautiful message to help someone. And then that person feels helped and then 
the job is done or whatever. So I'm comfortable being out there. And uh, so I'll talk about two different people. One is um, whom I, I will call Fairy Girl. There's something about her. She would walk very regally. And I just felt like she did not belong, not just in the summer camp place, but like on earth. And so I don't know what kind of being she is, um, but I just call her fairy girl. Um, she, uh, she was feisty, but um, she was also doing this with her hands, trying to disperse energy because there's a lot of darkness. And for myself, I can feel energy. So I, I got what she was trying to do, but I was also looking, looking at her trying to figure her out and um and then I went up to her and no one would talk to her she kind of scared people but I went up to her and I said I know who you are and she first she was defensive because she's definitely like feisty and uh and she and then she realized that I was for real and hold on phone call sorry and then um she when I said, um, I know who you are, and because uh, I do, I can see people, not just what you're projecting um, at times, um, but, uh, and she says, you do? And I said, yeah, I know you're not of this earth. And she goes, how do you know? And I get it, we're at summer camp, so I get it, this sounds loony, but um, I do feel like um, I could see the essence whom she was um, stuck in a human body. And so then the words that came through me for her, when I get messages like that, I always do a check because, um, thoughts are not necessarily our own. And so, you know, use discernment. Um, is this something you would say anyhow? Is this something you would do anyhow? Think about it before your thoughts just uh, to overtake you with uh, reactionary behavior. Um, so anyhow, the words that were going to come through me, I approved, you know, Jen approved. And uh, so when I said, yeah, I see you, uh, you're not of this earth. I said, you're here to reflect where you came from, not mirror where we are. And her whole face lit up and she became like a little girl, um, not age-wise, but innocence-wise, like, yeah, you know, she, um, and then uh, days later, I found out that she was in there for um, just always starting fights or being in fights with people, and I think um, just like many of us have a history of being the hammer or the nail living in this um, tool of a world, um, you know, she decided to be a hammer, and because uh, we don't fit in this toolbox. Um, I know I'm always full of metaphors. Um, that's just my way of understanding. And uh, anyhow, so that's Fairy Girl. I like that saying, but she, she's going to play a side character um, in this uh, next experience of summer camp. There's this girl um, whom I met, and um, I had asked her, you know, why was she in here for I just talk. You're not supposed to ask, but I do. And uh, she said, well, she was trying to off herself and then uh, forgot that the last bullet is in the, um, that she used up the last bullet when scaring away an intruder So to her property. So I said, well, that's unusual because, um, you know, if <sighs> I'm interrupting myself because people think I, that I should respond Oh, your suicide, like your suicide, that's your business, uh, what you do with your body. Um, you know, don't let your th thoughts overtake what you really want to do. Um, and it's not up to me or anyone else. Only you know if it's really the right thing. And I like you being here. Um, so that's not the issue. Um, I know when I was suicidal, like only I could have stopped myself. So whatever. And plus we were at, okay, I'm interrupting myself. So my response is not to address the fact that she wanted suicide. My response was interesting because most females, um, take the, the easier way out, the indirect, softer way of pills or whatever. And, um, and I said, you know, guns are, guys usually do the, the quick, uh, direct thing. And, uh, well, the more, so 
again, I, I could see her, you know, and, um, and, uh, so she shared a lot. She's um, a mafia girl, my mafia daughter's a mafia man's daughter, and she's in that world or was in that world. Who knows? Um, and uh, even though she comes in a very female form, she's definitely uh, full of masculine energy. She knows how to take care of herself. She knows how to scare away a guy with a gun if they come on their property or whatever. Um, so, all right. So this one... Uh, Mafia girl, she uh, she was in the middle of the sofa we were sitting on. I was to her right, and fairy girl was to her left. And you know we're at summer camp, and um, one of the rules is you don't touch other people. I'm sure to prevent bad stuff, but whatever you know, add sleep, uh, not sleep, add touch deprivation to our list of what our ailments are, and. Uh, Anyhow, she's like, I just want a hug. And so I told her, I said, well, you know, one of my things, here's another weird thing about me, is that at times I can give a hug without touching. And uh, she's like, what? And so um, she's very much in touch with the um, earthly ways. And, uh, and so, but I looked over at Fairy Girl. I'm like, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And she's just like... <laughs> And I said, and I asked uh, Mafia Girl, I said, do you want um, us to give you a hug? And so she's, she was so desperate for a hug. She said, yes, she wasn't even weirded out by our woo-woo stuff. And um, so the closest thing I can do it, I think it's the movie Stargate. I don't watch, I really don't watch The Matrix or Star Wars or Star, like I don't watch those movies, but I think the poster, or I must have seen a preview where the st- the, the guy does this to the, uh, what do you call it, like a bubble wall to get um, to the other side. <laughs> I don't know my vocabulary for this kind of talk, but um, I just experience it. I'm just an experiencer, by the way. Um, okay, so, um, so when I hug, it just comes out like a wave and I'm sure physics people, uh, quantum physics people, I'm sure they can explain all this, that everything is energy, so whatever. I just give um, a hug, and meanwhile, fairy girl is giving her hug, and then um, <laughs> mafia girl is receiving, oh, I just had a flash, you know, the um, the volume button on computers, um, and it, it looks like a megaphone with the lines, that's what it looks like, you know, it's coming at her, but from two directions. And then all of a sudden the mafia girl goes Ugh, like that because it was too powerful, she said later. And um, obviously she's uncomfortable with it because how can we feel stuff without, you know, physically touching each other? So that weirded her out and she's like, what was that? And so I explained to her, but I also apologized because I'd never done it with a, you know, second person. And then I asked her, I said, would you like one just with me and so after she calmed down and heard my explanation she's like okay and then uh so i then face her more and um then only i give her that virtual hug and usually there's resistance with people and so you know if you really don't want the hug it's not going to happen um but but i went like this oh now it wasn't my physical body it was um Was it my essence? Was it my energy? I don't know. You quantum physics people can explain that. But um, so I, I just like fell into her little bubble because I think each of us have a bubble around us and it's up to us with our free will to decide, um, are we going to let Facebook, mm, the news, our family, school system, are we going to let them decide what our bubble looks like or what? Okay, I'm not going to get into that. So there I am. I fell into her bubble, and then I felt hugged. And I was like, are you hugging me too? (laughs) And she was just like, yes. And so we were both hugging without touching. And uh, it was lovely. (laughs) It was lovely. Why is it taken away from us? Why are we being programmed and taught that we cannot receive seemingly physical TLC without the physicality of it. But anyhow, it went on with her. She and I were um, kind of played with each other. Um, 
I guess because she had, you know, she played with me by giving me a hug without asking me for permission. Um, you know, we did other things where uh, later that afternoon she was across the conference room at summer camp and uh, she was kneeling on a chair facing the other way. And I thought, I'll play with her since she played with me. I'm like, turn around, turn around, turn around. And she didn't turn around, so then I'm just doing my stuff and talking to people near me, and then I'd be like, turn around, turn around, turn around. Nothing, 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 turn around, turn around. I'm like, it's not working. It, I did it several times, and then uh, she was uh, plopped herself next to me um, on the sofa. She goes, why didn't you turn around? I'm like, what? I was trying to make you turn around. In fact, I was a little irritated at it. So she explained she was actually playing the same game. We didn't know we were playing, like, we never talked about playing this game, so we each came up with it on our own. That's another rabbit hole to go down to if it really is on our own. Um, <laughs> it's just we were doing it on opposite times, so that was fun. I also told her about how if you rub your ears and you look at the person, you can make that person like touch their ear. And um, this said, it's like people, maybe we're awake because we're the ones that would not misuse the power to hurt others. So whoever's listening to this, if, you, if you're like thinking, ah, I can do this to hurt people, like, no, no. Those of us who are in team good, you know, the X-Men or whatever, um, we're, we're here to use our powers for good. So whatever. I think we have a lot more. They're not powers. They're just gifts that I think everyone has. But my theory is that a certain one percenter are in the know of this power, that words are spells, that um, intentions have power, that thought have power, and you can actually give virtual hugs. So what else, you know, what are those with ill intentions um, for their own good and not for the good of all? What are they... Um, doing with this knowledge. Oh, they would probably want us to not know about this. So I'm just sharing with you my sampler tray of um, experiences because I believe that this is something that we all have. Like, who am I? I'm nobody special. Um, I mean, we're all special. I get it. Um, it's just, it's just, I think we have these um, abilities for a reason and they lock up many people or like that neighbor calling me a witch. And yeah, yeah, there are some in our community who are going out of their way to make videos about me because I'm um, not uh, specifically in their belief system. Um, and yeah, that's a program you know, that you bought into too. And I think it's actually, my heart actually goes out to you because it's got to be harder for you knowing that you've been programmed your whole life. Um, that, you know, there's not one way is not the answer. One way is not, um, your way is not the way. There are many paths. I'm not here to, um, to create more mountains in an already obstacle filled place but um you know you can make videos on me it's just you're representing others of us um and it's not fair you're not acting very christ-like at all so sorry i was not planning on talking about that but yeah um the unaffected in society calling us crazy because we experienced the Mandela effect, it feels the same to me when Christians or other belief system groups say, well, like even the medical group, Mississippi Talker, I love you because you um, actually can address this issue without um, the rudeness that, uh, you know, like the Christian groups can sometimes be, but you're in the anatomy, uh, you're in the medical field. So yeah, you don't experience the anatomy changes. You don't see them. Well, that's a good thing because if you're going to do CPR on someone, you want to know where the heart is this specific day, you know? Um, so, and whether we live in a um, globe or flat earth, you know, I think, speaking of flat earthers and globists, 
both of you are right and neither of you are right. So here we go. Here we go. My belief is we are in essence wanting to express ourselves and we gave ourselves form. So if you want what, whatever verbiage you want, if that works for you, use it, you know, um, God is coming through us and, um, and we are being able to be God like through these vessels. If we are the gamer in the sky, they're all creators, then we are the avatars that um, the gamers can experience this, right? So maybe the higher self is a gamer. Um, if there are alien scientists and we're in a Petri dish, well, you know, let's create a beautiful Petri dish environment. Um, it doesn't matter, for my opinion, uh, where we are, what our world looks like, what vocabulary, what, um, you know, um, you have to uh, be able to, to, you can only believe this and nothing else is valid. It's like if that belief system works for you, then that is the world you live in. I believe we are one essence expressing ourselves through multiple, uh, the kids just got out from the school bus. Um, we are one essence expressing ourselves through multiple experiences in the here now. The here now, there is no time. We are everything and nothing. We are everywhere and nowhere. And guess what? Nowhere, speaking of spells, is now here. When we are nowhere, we are still here. We are now here. So our now here can look differently depending on how God or the Creator or our higher selves or the alien scientist wants us to live. Um, you know, so, um, and guess what? There are many worlds in this one earth, and this earth is housing the many worlds, and um, the earth can uh, look differently for different people. Um, our costumes look different for different people, the avatars, the God creations. You know, um, okay, so I'm kind of rambling, but I do get mama bearish when um, you make um, a video about me because of my beliefs. You're not being kind. You're just not being kind. And no, that's not what Jesus would do. He loved everybody. And, and I love you and I get it. That works for you. So, so be what Jesus was and is. Actually be that. Spend time loving a person and not um, deeming them crazy. Me not crazy and neither are you. Your, your belief system is real. Uh, my belief system is real. Um, we've been programmed to have certain belief systems. I think uh, our society was hijacked and so that certain people could benefit. Yeah, the heads of your um, certain groups belief systems too. So um, let there be peace on earth while we are here expressing our creator's essence. And you're not crazy either. I love you.